night vision mounts and helmets welcome to rapid fire rundown today we're going to be discussing other basic necessities of night vision the helmet and the mount in my prior video we discussed what to look for when purchasing your first night vision device in this video we're going to dive deeper into what different mounts are recommended as well as providing helmet recommendations to start things off, I wanted to explain the different ways to wear a PVS-14 device. The first way is going to be mounting it directly to your rifle. This is useful as a dedicated hunting rifle and not much else. With this setup, you will not be able to properly assess your surroundings and scan your environment. Well, actually you can, but it's going to be very slowly and the people you're with aren't going to appreciate you flagging them with your rifle whenever you want to do a quick 360. This does have its uses though, like previously mentioned, putting this on a dedicated optic rifle is a much better shooting experience than trying to line your PVS-14 behind an LPVO or ACOG when mounted to your rifle. I would really only recommend this if you explicitly wanted this for hunting or a DMR, DMR rifle build where you were in a static position. As a final note, this does look really freaking cool, so there's that I guess. The second way of mounting night vision is going to be on a cry nightcap or a ops core skull crusher. These caps are mostly made of cloth apart from the shroud and is essentially mounting a heavy PBS-14 to the front of your hat. If you think that would be uncomfortable, you're 100% correct. These are very specific options that have a lot of downsides, but absolutely have some unique pros to them. First, and most importantly, they are portable. They allow you to bring your PVS-14 and mounting device anywhere you go without taking up much space. A helmet setup does not fit into the average bag without at least taking up 90% of its volume. This setup reduces down to just barely over the size of a PVS-14. The downsides of this is that they are significantly less comfortable than a helmet setup. If you do not properly adjust the counterweight, you will absolutely be regretting your life choices when on your two hour hike, never mind a eight hour or longer use case you often see in military operations. They are also significantly less stable and are prone to moving under recoil or even just walking around. This is really only used for portability and that's about it. I would not recommend this to someone getting into night vision with one other caveat and that is the price. These run under a hundred bucks and are very affordable. Just don't use them for an extended amount of time unless you're a masochist. The final two ways are going to be a bump helmet and a ballistic helmet. I want to spend some time going over the two of these options and explaining the pros and cons to them. Let me try and explain the difference in as few a words as I can. Do you think you will be in an area where bullets will be shot in your direction? Or frag may be a legitimate possibility. Buy a ballistic helmet. If not, there's nothing wrong with buying a bump. Generally, I feel that most people start out with a bump helmet. This is for a few reasons. First of all, and most importantly, they are a lot cheaper than a ballistic. Ballistic helmets normally start in the four digit price range. With some exceptions, I'll go over later. Bump helmets like this Team Wendy Xville can be found for about three, four hundred dollars, and this op score for once again between three and five hundred dollars. You can find other bump helmets for cheaper, but I would recommend you stay to major brands for a few reasons. The first reason is quality. Opscore and Team Wendy are trusted brands. Does it matter a ton who makes your glorified bicycle helmet? Maybe, maybe not. But if I'm hanging 3K, 5K, 10K off my helmet, you know I want to buy something with a trusted name behind it. Like I said previously, there are other helmet manufacturers, but I'm really only going to talk about these two in this video. I understand wanting to spend $100 on a helmet, Night vision is expensive enough, and it can be frustrating to spend 3k on knots and then have to spend another k on mounting and a helmet. But the pros do outweigh the cost. If you think 300 is too much for a helmet, this may not be the hobby for you. Although, please feel free to look for information elsewhere. 
There are plenty of brands like Hardhead Veterans that make a cheap bump. But, well, do a quick Google search on them and you may be swayed back to the light. So, Team Wendy or OpsCore? Well, that's where opinions are divided. OpsCore is the more trusted brand, at least in my opinion, but Team Wendy does make a darn good helmet. And when you ask most people, I'm gonna put a chart on the screen and we'll tally up in pros and cons between the two. We'll start with price. These two helmets are between three and $400 most of the year. You can find good deals on the Team Wendy website. That is where I got my Team Wendy hip pump helmet. And you can find a lower price, but the same can be said for the Ops Core. I don't want to give a point to either company. They are almost the same price for the most part. Moving on. Rails. The Team Wendy uses a proprietary mounting system for its rails. While a strong system that a lot of companies like Unity, as an example, support, the OpsCore helmet uses arc rails. Arc rails are a much better mounting solution on hardware compatibility alone. Just be aware, arc rails are known to chew your knuckle. The Team Wendy uses a, and I'm going to quote this, integrated machined aluminum mounting plate. There is no doubt this is very strong as a mounting plate. I have had no issues with this plate other than it being incredibly tight when I first got it. The OpsCore utilizes a molded front, which I rarely see break, but is absolutely going to be more fragile than the Team Wendy. Ask yourself this, are you smashing your tube into every doorway, or are you, for whatever reason, wanting to make sure you can properly bash your NVG mount into someone in a fight? Well, I doubt you're going to break it, but if you do ever want to use your NVG as a faux rhinoceros horn, and you don't have a breakaway feature, I guess you want to stick with the Team Wendy system. A point to Team Wendy. Our next category, the retention system, comfort, and the chin strap. The Team Wendy utilizes a cam fit retention BOA system, which many people, myself included, think is extremely comfortable. It is absolutely excellent for tightening and loosening when necessary. But then again, most bicycle helmets use this system, so it's not that special. The Wendy also uses cam locks for excellent adjustability, as well as Zorbium foam liner, which is a little thin, but if it's for a lightweight bump helmet, it should be fine. There are excellent aftermarket pads if you are interested. Keep in mind, getting huge, comfortable, thick pads can affect the sizing of the helmet. OpsCore. The OpsCore comes with a EPP OCC dial fit band and a four-point chin strap for right-eye dominant people, which means the buckle will be on the left. The OpsCore pads, in my opinion, feel about the same as the Team Wendy. Maybe slightly better, actually. The Team Wendy caused some pressure points in my head I can't quite put a finger on. Uh, I'm actually still using these pads, but I adjust them around and I'm still looking for an optimal setup. If I were to choose the best options between the two helmets, I would say the Team Wendy has a slightly better retention system. The pads are about even, maybe an edge to OpsCore, and the chin strap also to Wendy. Uh, on both of these systems, people usually say the Team Wendy is much more comfortable. I've never really understood why, and they are both extremely customizable if you do find any issues. As always, you can just throw money at the problem. A point to both. Last but not least, the elephant in the room if you will, I wanted to discuss the warranty. I only have first-hand experience on this Team Wendy right here, and really wanted to explain the warranty issue I had. So, as you can see, this helmet is spray-painted. Well, I sent this helmet over to a fine gentleman on Facebook that sells cut ACH helmets and others that can be high cut. He also transferred most of the guts from this Wendy over to that helmet. At some point during either shipping, or yeah, it's possible I just overlooked this helmet, but it developed a crack. When I reached out to Team Wendy support, I received a call a few days to a week later, 
explaining that they could not assist me at all because the helmet had been spray painted. Let's let that sink in for a minute. A helmet company would not allow a repair request or a warranty request because it had been spray painted. The elements can affect ballistic helmets. I can only assume spray paint may do the same, but this is a bump helmet, a glorified bicycle helmet that military personnel use. And because there was spray paint on the helmet, they would not help me whatsoever. Also, how would a crack even get here? Should I not expect that the helmet won't de uh, deliver cracks from where I can only assume was nothing? Maybe a few bumps while shipping? The helmet is fine. It works. I could use this in a pinch if I wanted to. That's the reason I kept it around all this time. But I expect more from my companies I choose to support. So overall, I was very upset with this Wendy. So what about Opscore? Well, I did a Google search. I'm not exactly sure if Gentex or Opscore will help you with spray paint. I hope they do. I think it's ridiculous not to. But I don't have anything negative to say about the Opscore bump as I have very little time on them. I have a buddy that uses this bump and he's not seen any issues with cracking or shroud issues. And I, I don't want to deduct points from Wendy and give them to Opscore, but I don't think that's fair. If you have gotten warranty service for a similar situation with either of these helmets, please respond down below. I'm interested. I'm going to assume they both fail this category. Well, so there we have it. Both helmets have their quirks. Neither is really better than the other. I personally lean towards the ops core. It can be very frustrating trying to set up a Wendy due to their attachment system. Ops core is the industry standard for a reason. I wanted to discuss one more type of helmet briefly before we close this video out. As I alluded to earlier, I had an ACH cut by a great gentleman on Facebook called High Cut Conversions. If I were to restart my helmet journey, I would start there. The ACH, or Advanced Combat Helmet, is a ballistic helmet rated up to level 3A, which covers the ears of the user. This is an issue for many people when trying to run EarPro and comms. Many people prefer a high cut or super high cut to accommodate their ear protection, myself included. That's where the conversion comes in. There is my reference, but also websites that you can send an ACH and other ballistic helmets to that can convert them to high cuts for a small amount of money. The ACHs can be found for a couple hundred or less online, or significantly less if you are lucky enough to find them at a military surplus store. I'm talking under $100. It's a good deal. I cannot recommend this enough. A ballistic helmet obviously has ballistic qualities, but it also provides a much more stable platform. This can use ops core rails, the Wendy BOA system, and the chin strap. And it's not going to crack because, well, it's a ballistic helmet. It's not made out of flimsy plastic. And you can spray paint it without caring because it's not under warranty anyway. I will do a full review on this helmet in the future, my current setup. But for now, I really recommend you see if you can find any ACHs in your area because it truly is my favorite option thus far. Anyway, so that's my rapid fire rundown on helmet types for mounting night vision devices. This is a great and expansive topic that I will absolutely continue to talk about in the future. I actually believe a proper helmet setup is more important than a plate carrier setup for many reasons, but that'll have to be another video. If you have any questions, please feel free to post down below in the comments where we can continue this discussion. Thanks again for tuning into the channel. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you all in the next one.